is Erica Williams. She is deputy director of a group called Campus Progress. Ms. Williams, what is Campus Progress? Campus Progress is a project of the Center for American Progress, uh, and our focus is on supporting young progressives across the country in advocating for progressive policy change, developing new young leaders, and supporting them in making changes right now on their campuses and in their communities. How do you define a progressive? Um, a progressive is someone, and, and this is, you know, this varies, and there are many definitions and answers. Um, most of the young people that I work with, and myself included, believe that being a progressive is all about understanding that uh, there's a certain common good that we're all working towards. We believe in putting people over privilege. Um, we believe in uh, that concept that all people are created equal, but not just under God, also under the law. Um, and that's kind of what we work towards, this idea of a common good. And if you would, translate that into an issue. Uh, well, there are a couple issues right now that are pretty hot and heavy. Um, and I would say health care is one. Um, we believe that it's a basic human right. It's a fundamental human right, um, and especially for, for Americans in such a wealthy country, uh, to have access to affordable health care um, that, is, that is equitable across all um, incomes, statuses, ethnic groups. Um, and we believe that government should have a role in making sure that happens. Uh, do you believe that if it requires more taxation, that's fair? Absolutely, and not only do I believe that and the young people that I work with, but there have been polling that said that young people, particularly millennials, young people aged 17 through 26, uh, 27, do believe, I think it was about 87 percent support um, government uh, intervention in health care and also higher taxation if necessary. How did you get involved? in this organization? Uh, well, I used to work at the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights, which is um, uh, the nation's oldest, largest, and most diverse civil and human rights coalition. I focused on uh, civil rights legislation at the federal level and wanted to kind of uh, direct my focus a little bit more towards young people specifically. So Campus Progress had reached out to me to speak at several events. Um, and when I came and I saw the energy of the young people that were working with it, I said, this is where um, the next generation is, my generation. And it's important to give us the tools and the resources to make that change happen. So I was intrigued. Where did you go to school and when did you get involved in politics? I went to the school at the University of Maryland College Park. Um, and I got, I got involved in politics actually a little bit after graduation. There were issues that impacted me as an undergraduate student, but I didn't necessarily realize the connection between those and kind of policy, specifically at a national level. For example, the issue of college affordability. I realized that it was unaffordable. It was very difficult um, to be able to pay for a college education, but I didn't realize the connection between that and federal policy until I graduated, began working at the Leadership Conference and seeing the connection between the things that people in my daily life needed uh, and the role of government in that. Uh, did you, were you political uh, earlier before college and, and where'd you grow up, what'd your parents do? I grew up here in the Washington DC area, uh, born in the district, lived in Maryland. Um, and my parents were full-time ministers and pastors. So I was civic-minded, absolutely, but not necessarily political. I, I realized that there was a role that I, as a citizen, was supposed to play in bettering my community. Growing up, my primary avenue was faith. Um, I was an African-American studies and public policy major in college, and at that time I kind of made the connection, you know what, there are other ways also to benefit my community. Now you currently have a, uh, a quite an agenda um, of events going on here in Washington, your your annual meeting. Yes, or it just meeting. ended actually yesterday. And uh, you got Nancy Pelosi and Bill Clinton to speak. We how'd did. You, how'd you do that? You know, they actually have always demonstrated um, a, a passion and commitment to supporting young people. Um, so we extended the invitation and they accepted. They've actually spoken in our conference before. We also were privileged to have Secretary uh, Sebelius, um, Van Jones, who's a special advisor to the president on green jobs. Uh, we had a, a, a long cast of amazing speakers who were there and they demonstrated a, a commitment um, to supporting young people and not just talking down and saying, you know, you all are great, you voted in record numbers, but more importantly, what can you be doing now? And that was the focus of our conference this year. Did the Center for American Progress sponsor, when did this organization start? Uh, uh, this particular organization, Campus Progress, the project developed in 2005. Um, so it wasn't the initial vision of uh, Center for American Progress, but we saw that it was a great, there was a great need that if we're going to lay out this progressive vision for America and support uh, the nation's leading thinkers and social scientists and, uh, and politicians in developing this progressive agenda, young people were a critical part of that. And is it in response to or uh, 
counter to like a Young Americans for Freedom, which has been around for quite a while, yeah? Yeah, Young America Foundation, they've been around for quite a while. I wouldn't necessarily say it's in response to. Uh, it's similar in the idea that we, just like conservatives, think that young people have an incredible amount of energy and passion, but I do think, and I'm a little biased, but I do think that we do it better in the sense that we are not just developing leaders for the next generation. We are actually encouraging young people to get out now and be active, and they are. Erica Williams is our guest. She's Deputy Director of Campus Progress. 25 and under only this morning <laughs> to talk to Erica. First call for her comes from Jefferson, Iowa. Ted, a Democrat. Go ahead, Ted. Yes, well, first of all, thank you, C-SPAN, for taking my call. Um, <laughs> I realize that there aren't very many people my age that really listen to C-SPAN on a regular basis. How old are you? I am uh, 24. Okay. Good for you. And, but my question is, is of course, I live in a rural area. Okay. And um, what have you have you seen this campus progress during trying to um, come into rural areas? I have seen the progressive movement be uh, become very active and mm -hmm. um, alive in more urban areas and areas that tend to attract more progressive thinking people anyway. But I see, especially in my area, a great divide between urban versus rural. Mm -hmm. And what is the progressive movement trying to do to come into rural areas and trying to um, educate um, and or do outreach into my area and I will listen to your answer. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for the question. It was a great question. Um, that is actually something that Campus Progress has made a concerted effort to do since the very beginning, since 2005. In fact, our beginning chapters were targeted specifically in rural areas and um, in predominantly conservative campuses because we found that not only is there a great need um, for the type of resources and support um, and exposure that we provide, but that also the students and young people in those areas, um, you know, kind of soak up the information and, and are some of our strongest advocates. Um, so we have have chapters. We did, I, I, is, is he already off the call or is he still on? The, He's gone. He's gone. Okay. So I'm not sure exactly where, what rural areas, and I'd be able to tell him exactly what we have going on in his area. Um, but that is something that we've made a, a, a conscious effort to be able to do is to go into those areas and develop leaders. If he goes to campusprogress.org. Absolutely. If he goes to campusprogress.org, he could also email us at organize at campusprogress.org and we could direct him to the nearest either uh, student, student partner, uh, uh, campus rep, or anything that we have in the region. Is it only on college campuses? It is not. It's primarily on college campuses. I mean, our name is Campus Progress. But the idea is that we support young people uh, college age around, you know, 17 through 25, 26, uh, the millennial generation. So we did uh, initially start off focusing primarily on college campuses, but we're expanding now because that's not just, young people aren't just on college campuses. Kurt the Viking tweets in, <laughs> can the guest please speak to the economic incentives of progressive policy? When he's, uh, I wish I had some clarification when he says the economic incentives. Uh, I can I, talk a little bit about our economic uh, policy platform right now and I'm sure it'll, it'll hit on that a little bit. Um, so right now we're launching a campaign for economic opportunity. This idea that young people in this crisis, but not just in this particular economic crisis, just as a generation are facing some unique um, economic challenges. Looking at uh, college, like, like I said, the rising cost of college, so looking at education, looking at health care, even looking at transitioning to a green economy. Young people and young progressives especially believe that there needs to be a conscious, bold, strong, dramatic investment in these core areas, education, health care, and uh, uh, clean energy in order to ensure our economic future. So we do see these things as connected and linked. So when we talk about the economy, we're talking about these issues.